my mother-in-law's urgent honeymoon call. Run from my son. Fallon, you need to leave. You need to leave Brody now. Those words shattered the serene atmosphere of our honeymoon suite, echoing through my mind with an urgency that I couldn't ignore. Harris's voice, usually so composed, was filled with panic. Standing on the balcony of our villa, overlooking the crystal clear waters of Bora Bora, I felt my heart race as her desperate plea hung in the air. How could everything has gone so wrong so quickly? Brody and I had what seemed like a fairy tale romance. We met five years ago at a mutual friend's party. He was charming, intelligent, and incredibly handsome. Our connection was immediate, and it wasn't long before we were inseparable. Brody was everything I had ever wanted in a partner. He made me feel loved, cherished, and safe. After three years of dating, Brody proposed to me on a snowy mountaintop. It was a moment straight out of a movie, and of course, I said yes. Our wedding was a beautiful celebration of our love, surrounded by friends and family. Harris, my mother-in-law, was a constant source of support and joy throughout the planning process. She was warm, caring, and treated me like her own daughter. For our honeymoon, Brody had planned a luxurious two-week stay at an exclusive resort in Bora. It was the perfect escape, a paradise just for the two of us. The first few days were blissful. We spent our time lounging on the beach, exploring the island, and enjoying romantic dinners under the stars. Everything seemed perfect. On the fifth night, as we were having dinner in our suite, my phone rang. I glanced at the screen and saw Harris's name. I excused myself and stepped out onto the balcony to take the call, expecting a routine check-in. Hi, Harris. I greeted her cheerfully. Fowlin, you need to listen to me very carefully, she said, her voice trembling. You have to leave Brody. You need to get away from him right now. My heart skipped a beat. What are you talking about? There's so much you don't know, she continued, her voice urgent. Brody, he's not who you think he is. He's dangerous, Fallon. Please, you have to trust me. A cold shiver ran down my spine. Dangerous? What do you mean? Please just leave. Find a way to get off the island and come back home. I'll explain everything when you get here. I was speechless, my mind racing with questions. I, I don't understand. There's no time to explain now, she insisted. Just promise me you'll get away from him. Before I could respond, the call ended. I stood there, my mind reeling. What could possibly be so urgent that Harris would ask me to leave my husband during our honeymoon? I returned to the table, my heart heavy with dread. Brody looked up from his meal, his eyes searching mine. Who was that? He asked. It was your mom, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady. His expression hardened. What did she say? She... She told me to leave you, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. She said you're dangerous. Brody's face contorted with anger. She's lying, he spat. She's always been controlling, trying to manipulate people. You can't trust her. I took a step back, feeling a surge of fear. Why would she say that? Because she wants to ruin our marriage, he said, his voice rising. She's never been happy for us. She's always been jealous of anyone who gets close to me. I wanted to believe him, but something in his eyes made me uneasy. Brody, I need to know the truth. What is she talking about? He stood up abruptly, knocking his chair over. I don't have to explain myself to you, he shouted. You're my wife, and you should trust me. I felt tears streaming down my face. Brody, please. I need to know. He took a deep breath, his expression softening. I'm sorry, Fallon, he said, his voice calmer. I just... I can't lose you. Please, let's just enjoy our honeymoon. The rest of the evening passed in a blur. I couldn't shake the feeling of dread that had settled in my chest. Brody seemed to be trying too hard to act normal, and I couldn't ignore the nagging feeling that something was terribly wrong. That night, while Brody was asleep, I decided to call Harris back. I needed answers. Fallon, thank God, she said as soon as she answered. Are you safe? For now, I replied, my voice trembling. Harris, please, tell me what's going on. She took a deep breath. Brody has a history of violence, Fallon. When he was younger, he was involved in a serious incident. He assaulted someone, a girl he was dating. She almost didn't survive. We managed to keep it out of the public eye, but it was bad. He was diagnosed with severe anger management issues. I felt like the floor had been pulled out from under me. 
Why didn't you tell me this before? I thought he had changed, she said, her voice filled with regret. He went through therapy, and for a while, it seemed like he was getting better. But recently, he's been showing signs of his old behavior. I couldn't live with myself if something happened to you. My mind raced, trying to process her words. What do I do? You need to get off the island, she urged. Go to the airport and take the first flight out. I'll make sure there's someone waiting for you when you land. As soon as I hung up, I knew I had to act quickly. I packed a small bag, trying to be as quiet as possible. My heart pounded in my chest as I made my way to the door. Just as I was about to leave, Brody stirred in his sleep, and I froze, praying he wouldn't wake up. Once I was sure he was still asleep, I quietly slipped out of the suite. The resort was dark and silent, with only the sound of the waves crashing against the shore. I made my way to the lobby, where the night manager was on duty. I need a taxi to the airport, I whispered it urgently. The manager looked at me with concern but quickly made the arrangements. It'll be here in a few minutes, he said. I nodded, glancing nervously over my shoulder. I could only hope that Brody wouldn't wake up and find me gone. The taxi arrived, and I jumped in, giving the driver the address of the airport. As we sped towards the airport, I kept looking over my shoulder, half expecting to see Brody's car behind us. But there was no sign of him. I arrived at the airport and hurried to the ticket counter, buying the first ticket out of there. As I sat in the waiting area, my phone buzzed with messages from Brody. Where are you? You can't just leave me like this. Come back, and we can talk. I turned off my phone, my hands trembling. I boarded the plane and sank into my seat, my mind racing with fear and confusion. Had I done the right thing? What if Harris was wrong? But the look in Brody's eyes when he grabbed me told me I had made the right choice. When I landed, Harris was waiting for me. She hugged me tightly, her eyes filled with tears. I'm so sorry, Fallon, she said. I should have warned you sooner. I nodded, too overwhelmed to speak. We drove back to her house, and she explained everything in more detail. Brody had been violent in the past, and while he had shown signs of improvement, the stress of the wedding had triggered his old behavior. I just couldn't let you go through what that other girl went through, Harris said, her voice breaking. I hope you can forgive me. The next few months were a blur of therapy sessions, legal proceedings, and emotional turmoil. I filed for a restraining order against Brody and began the process of annulment. It was painful, but I knew it was necessary for my safety. Harris was incredibly supportive throughout the whole ordeal. She helped me find a therapist and offered me a place to stay until I could get back on my feet. Slowly but surely, I began to heal. One day, as I was going through some old boxes in Harris's attic, I came across a journal. It belonged to Brody. Flipping through the pages, I found entries from his teenage years, detailing his struggles with anger and his violent outbursts. But there was one entry that stood out. It was dated just a few months before our wedding. I feel like I'm losing control again. The anger is building up, and I don't know how to stop it. Fallon doesn't know. I don't want to hurt her, but I'm scared of what I might do. Mom thinks I've changed, but I'm not sure I have. Reading those words, my heart broke for the young man he had been. It was clear that he had been struggling with his demons for a long time, and that he had been desperate for help, but it didn't change the fact that he had put me in danger. As the months passed, I began to rebuild my life. I found a new job, a new place to live, and started to find joy in the little things again. I still had moments of fear and doubt, but with the support of my therapist and Harris, I was slowly finding my way back to myself. Harris and I grew closer during this time. She became like a second mother to me, offering me the love and support I needed to heal. We often talked about Brody, about his struggles, and about the choices he had made. It was a painful topic, but it helped me understand and come to terms with what had happened. And a year after that fateful honeymoon, I found myself standing on a beach, much like the one where my life had changed forever. But this time, I was alone, and it was a symbol of my newfound strength and independence. I had come a long way from the terrified bride who had fled from her husband. I had faced my fears, uncovered the truth, and found the courage to move forward. I knew that I would always carry the scars of that experience, but they no longer define me. My story is a testament to the power of resilience, the importance of listening to our instincts, and the strength it takes to leave a toxic situation. It's a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there is always hope for a brighter future. 
So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you feel unsafe or unsure, listen to that inner voice. Trust yourself and know that you have the strength to make it through. There is always a way out and there is always hope for a better tomorrow. As I stood on that beach, watching the sun set over the horizon, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. I had survived my interrupted honeymoon, and I had come out stronger on the other side, and that was something worth celebrating.